Hey, how's it going guys? Call Mush back at it with a $400 gaming PC build. This is a very entry-level build that is geared towards budget-end gamers, but this can still run all the games that are coming out at decent settings and decent frame rates. Obviously not maxed out at 1080p, but you're still going to be able to play games like Battlefield Hardline Witcher 3 at medium to high settings at around 30 to 35 or sometimes even higher frame rates. So this is a really solid build for those of you on a tight budget, so let's get right into it. Starting things off with the CPU, I went with the AMD FX6300 3.5 GHz 6 core processor. This is an absolutely awesome CPU for only $90. The great thing about this CPU is it's an all-around CPU. It really excels at gaming, but it also does really good for the price in video editing and rendering. For only $90, you're getting a really capable CPU that definitely can game and can do things like video editing on Sony Vegas at Adobe Premiere, and you can live stream with XSplit, uh, OBS, what have you. I like this CPU a lot more than the i3 right now. Obviously, it's cheaper. It's $90 versus the i3 is $130, $135, but a lot of games are really struggling to run on an i3. 3's dual core architecture. The FX6300 can still run games like Far Cry 4, Dragon Age Inquisition, while uh, i3's for a while couldn't even run those games. They've released a fix for them now, but do you want to be the guy when Far Cry 4 comes out you have to be scrambling to look for a fix, or do you just want to be gaming on it the day it comes out? That's up to you, but I would definitely go with the latter. And the FX6300 is definitely a great CPU for only $90. Like I said, just an all-around CPU, and honestly, one of the best CPUs on the market, in my opinion, uh, for its price range. $90, you're getting a really solid gaming performer, but also video editing and rendering, live streaming, and all of those things. Just a great budget and CPU. For the motherboard, I went with the Asus M5A78L-M USB 3 Micro ATX motherboard. This is only $50. Did I cheap out on the motherboard a little bit? Yeah, I probably did, but that's kind of necessary in a $400 build. This is $50 right now, and it's going to give you all the features you need and pretty much nothing else. It's a motherboard from Asus, so you can expect something pretty decent, but it's nothing fancy. It's not. It doesn't have all the features in the world. It does have four memory slots, so you do have expansion options as far as the RAM is concerned, but... Doesn't have the SATA 6, doesn't have USB 3, nothing like that. Uh, it's a pretty bare bones motherboard, but it's cheap. It's going to let you save money and put that towards the graphics card of the build. And that is the crux in a gaming machine. So uh, sacrifices had to be made in a $400 build, but this is still going to get the job done. For the RAM, I went with G-Skill Aries Series 8GB, 24GB sticks running at 1600MHz is around $60 right now. Really solid RAM. It's 8GB, 1600MHz. It's from G-Skill. I've recommended this RAM so many times. Uh, 8GB, it's really solid to fit this in into a $400 build because more and more games are requiring 8 gigabytes so just get that now and you won't have to upgrade in the future and 4 gigabytes is really becoming obsolete definitely go with 8 and this was only $60 very cheap and really solid RAM from G-Skill. For the hard drive, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch 7200 RPM hard drive. It's a 1TB hard drive. A lot of guys have been asking me, why don't I just drop the hard drive and go with an SSD altogether? Uh, 1TB SSDs do not exist for $50, so that's kind of a problem. Most of you guys need more than 120 gigabytes. 1TB for $50 is definitely a good deal. I've actually seen this hard drive as low as $40 before, so just really cheap for a lot of storage. For the graphics card, I went with the XFX Radeon R7260X. 1 gigabyte core edition video card $103 right now yeah this is a very cheap GPU and it definitely can game as well you can play games like Battlefield Hardline at around medium settings at 1080p and still get 35 to 40 frames per second if you dock that down to say 1600 by 900p then you're going to be getting 55 uh, maybe even 60 frames per second at medium settings I just think this is a great GPU for $100 a very entry level GPU but it can definitely game and even higher end games you can definitely play them at decent settings and decent frame rates and obviously games like League, World of Warcraft, you're going to play those no problem. So this is just a great GPU for around $100. For the power supply, one with the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus certified power supply. This is only $32 right now so it's cheap, it's affordable and it's going to power this build no problem. The FX6300 is actually fairly power efficient and then the Radeon R7260X is very power efficient so 500 watts is probably a little bit more than you need. I would say this build probably max around like 380 watts but this is cheap, it's 80 plus certified, so solid route to go with in a $400 build. Finally for the case, I went with the NZXT Source 210 White ATX Mid-Tower case. This comes in white and black, so just pick the color of your preference.
reference, and this is around $29 right now, solid mid-tower case, NZXT has a very good track record with all their cases, and while this isn't the fanciest case on the exterior, the interior is what matters, and for a $400 budget, this is really solid, and the price of $29 is kind of hard to turn down, so this is a great case from NZXT, it's mid-tower, it's gonna fit everything, no problem, and offer decent ventilation uh, for all your parts, so thanks for watching this video, guys, don't hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment down below with your request for future videos, I read every single comment, so if you have something to say, just comment down below, chances are I will read them, so thanks for watching this video, guys, I'll talk to y'all later, have a great day, peace.